Freddie, and congratulations for number nine. 1987 was another great year for the truly legendary Smokey Robinson. Here to sing number eight power hit just to see her. Once again, Mr. Smokey Robinson. Robinson, ladies and gentlemen. Smokey Robinson. This is it. The special of the year. Power hit 87 as the top 10 continues. Here's lucky number 7. Herb Alpert. Time class of voices and music today. And how could we let him co-host the show without letting him show us some of that magic? Now with his all-time classic power hit, You Should Be Mine, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeffrey Osborne. Thank you. 
think about it I'll be there just to rest around I can't hold back what I feel inside It's just a fact that you should More great music ahead, but first, a special interview, Walt. That's right, Whitney. 1987 was the year that Paul Simon's Graceland won the Grammy Award for the Album of the Year. Now, we caught up with Paul and asked him about the inspiration behind Graceland. Well, Graceland has a, a very powerful statement. It's, I mean, it, it is the most essential anti-apartheid statement that I think you can make. Uh, a white person works hand in hand with, with black people, black South Africans. They produce a piece of work that, uh, where everyone is fairly compensated, royalties are equally shared, uh, and uh, it's, uh, from my point of view, it was an act of, uh, of great love and respect for that, for that music. One of the biggest hits from the album was The Boy in the Bubble. Can you kind of tell us about that? The Boy in the Bubble, I mean, the actual Boy in the Bubble was a, was a child who couldn't uh, live in the environment because his immune system didn't protect him against uh, illness or disease. So he had to be in a germ-free environment. That was the bubble that was created for him. Science created this bubble. And then he was able to, to live at the same time, he was cut off from actual physical contact with any other human beings. So it's, I mean, it struck me as a, just a late 20th century metaphor. Coming up, Regina Bell, Stephanie Mills, Levert, System, and more on Power Hits. I two sons of Eddie Levert Sr. of the OJs. We asked them about their father's reaction to forming Levert. He didn't really want us to be in this business. As you know, through all the stuff that he had been through, through all the years and all the things he had seen, he would tell us, and, you know, we'd be like, okay, man, but that, that don't sound hard. That's easy. <laughs> we can do it. The song is Casanova. It's the best of 87, and you made it number six. Love Earth. Me and 
Number five in our year-end countdown, here's Stephanie Mills with I Feel Good All Over. Thank you. 
hit of 87. Regina Bell and Atlantic Star are on the way. Don't you dare miss it. Stars hold down the number four spot in our countdown. We asked Regina Bell about her roots in jazz. Well, jazz really started when I, when I started going to college. Um, while I attended college, I met a couple of people. Uh, Ralph Peterson, who's playing with uh, Stanley Tarantine, and uh, Alan Watson, who is now my keyboardist. Uh, we started doing some things, we started experimenting with some jazz, uh, different jazz idioms. With a smash power hit, Show Me The Way, here's Regina Bell with number four.
87 launched the career of our next guest in a very big way. The system joined the ranks of music's most popular acts with their hit Don't Disturb This Groove. We asked them what it feels like to have their first smash. It feels great. It feels great. I mean, we were out on tour for four or five months this summer, and uh, it was just fantastic. I mean, the, the reaction that we got from people was, was just the most fulfilling thing, and really it felt like a reward for a lot of years of very hard work. With the number three power hit of 1987, Don't Disturb This Groove, here's the system. the system. Our next artist has gone from success in one of the biggest groups of the 80s, Shalimar, to solo stardom of her own. We asked Jody Watley about whether it was a little scary being out there on her own the first time. It wasn't scary being on my own for the first time. I think it was uh, exactly more exciting because it was um, more challenging. And uh, being that it was more responsibility and I was going to be kind of flexing my muscles with um, a lot of creative control. Um, it wasn't frightening because it's really what I wanted. So I welcomed it. <laughs> Her first solo single is the second biggest power hit of the year. Here's looking for a new love, Miss Jody Watley.
Jody. Next, the biggest power hit of the year. A special performance by none other than Whitney Houston. It's the highlight of the year. Power, beauty. It takes all these words and more to describe Whitney Houston. She keeps turning out hit after hit. And here comes the latest with So Emotional, Whitney Houston. That was great, baby. Thank you. 
I'm sure it'll be the next number one record of 1988. So, thank you, Jeffrey, for those kind words. But isn't it time for the number one record of 1987? Yes, it is. But first, let's recap the top ten songs of the year. All right. At number ten, we had Surface with Happy. Freddie Jackson checked into the number nine spot with Have You Ever Loved Somebody? Just to see her with Smokey Robinson smash at number eight. Number seven was the instrumental hit, Diamonds, by Herb Alpert. Number six brought us Lavert's power hit, Casanova. Stephanie Mills owned the number five slot with I Feel Good All Over. Right. Show Me The Way was the song which showed Regina Bell to the number four hit of the year. The system locked into number three with Don't Disturb This Groove. Number two, it was Jody Watley with Looking For A New Love. And now, time for number one song of the year. Walt. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, the number one power hit of 1987. It's a song that was probably the most played record of the year on all radio stations. Girl, you are to me all that a woman should be and I dedicate my life to you all. A love like you are to me must have been Star, and you recognize it as always. Atlantic Star couldn't be with us tonight here on stage in Hollywood, so let's join them live via satellite backstage in Yokohama, Japan. Welcome Barbara Weathers and Wayne Lewis of Atlantic Star. Thank you. Congratulations on the number one record. When you recorded it, did you think it would be as big a hit as it was? We had hoped that it would be as big as it was because we knew it had the potential to be pretty big. I understand it wasn't a recent song. It was written a few years ago? Right, about five years ago. And uh, we just decided this was the right time to put it on uh, the LP, our latest LP. Who wrote it? Oh, my brother Jonathan, my brother David, and myself. <laughs> it was a big crossover hit on three different charts. Yes, it feels wonderful. <laughs> How long has the uh, group been together? Uh, let's say um, 10, 11 years. Were you right out of school? Uh, I came right out of high school, but the other guys are a bit older than I, so... Uh... <laughs> Barbara, when did you join Atlantic Star? 1984. What were you doing before Atlantic Star? I was singing with a local group at home from age 13 to 19, and then I left them and sang jazz for a year before I joined Atlantic Star. Where is home? North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. I want to know where you live now. Well, I just bought a house in North Carolina, but when you're on tour, you live everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you guys doing over in Japan? We're still touring now. Eating sushi and everything. <laughs> well, what's going to happen next? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think that it's going to be a bigger album. Uh, hopefully by 88 we'll be getting into uh, motion picture soundtracks and uh, we'll be David and I and Jonathan will produce another act and so forth Barbara have you always been so gorgeous no I'm really not that pretty it's the makeup it. <laughs> it's the <a> mask <laughs> any New Year's wishes for everybody well, I personally wish for the people that um, maybe the world and people individually will be able to learn to be themselves and like themselves because when you like yourself, it's so much easier to continue in life and be successful because you're not really worrying about anyone else or you're not really thinking negative. You're just going straight ahead. So I hope people learn to like themselves. And uh, I sincerely hope that in 88 we see more of the world liking each other and that will be... I think the greatest thing that could happen for the next, for 88, 98, <laughs> whenever. Thank you, Atlantic Star. Stay tuned. There's more from all of tonight's stars on Power Hits 87. Let's have another listen to the hottest sounds of 1987. I can feel it when you walk. Happy, happy. 
been great. Stay with the power. Good night. Power Hit 87 has been brought to you in part by Schlitz Malt Liquor. No one does it like the Ford. By the Coca-Cola Company, makers of Sprite. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? up on WPMT 43. The best television commercials in the world are honored on the 1987 Clear Award. Next on WPMT 43.